All right, well, hopefully you can hear me. Um, changing uh, drive chains, final drive chains in our New Holland 785 skid steer. Uh, it's a 1988, if I remember right. Um, pick this little transfer pump up from, I think, Harbor Freight like two years ago, three years ago, I actually use it for draining fluid out of tires, um, tractor tires, tires that are filled for weight. Um, works really well for that and also works really well for transferring any liquid. Um, this thing was like $30, $40. It might not even have been that much, but it works fantastic for, for transferring any liquid um on these there's drains on the front and the back because the drive chains are bathed in oil and that works as lubrication for those then it also powers the hydraulics um kind of it's a dual dual purpose um so these things hold like i think 23 or 24 gallons but anyways, so changing those out, um, they're stretched, but they're also, they've also got a few links that are, I don't want to say froze because they, they do move, but it's really hard to get them to move. Um, so they're, they're, they're real stiff. So every time, every time the chains would go around, you would hear, you would hear when it would get real tight. Um, and it just started getting started getting worse, and it's starting to bother me. So we're gonna swap those out. Uh, got to change that here in a second. So it's gonna be a short video. Um, did a video on this one other time. Hopefully you guys can hear me. You got the heat out in the shop right now. It's like five or six degrees out. We got an ice storm today. Uh, but the, <laughs> not a lot of rearranging with this skid steer. So you're gonna see holes cut all over the rear hood, like. Right there, right there. So this engine is from a 1983, 1984 Ford Ranger diesel pickup. Or, uh, same era, Mazda B2200. The... The original engine in this, to my understanding, through a rod, something, they swapped it out. Okay. These these skid steers had Perkins engines in them when they were sold. They had a Ford, they came with a three-cylinder Ford, and I think a four-cylinder Perkins. Um, either way, this this was this was swapped out. Um, we I have done some stuff to it as far as Parts, uh, water pump, a couple other things. It's a very interesting engine. Uh, I'm gonna unplug this real quick. It's a real interesting engine because, let me grab a light. One, it has two oil filters. You're gonna see some weird stuff. I had two feed out a bunch of round bales uh, to give me enough time to do this so I don't eat it again so uh, it's got a hydraulic or it's got an oil cooler um, that I got to rehook up um, it's gonna get replumbed in somewhere else so these engines two oil filters and second oil filter. I rerouted the exhaust. So anybody that says can't weld cast iron, can't weld cast iron. You know how to do it, right? Um, rerouted the exhaust on it. Uh, that was actually, I just did that recently. Um, Cause it went, 
the original outlet went down, then it came back up, and then it went over and came up in another spot, and it just drove me absolutely crazy. So, rerouted that. That straight pipe is going to get eliminated because it is loud. Um, the one thing that we did to this, it, it had some issues with power when I first got it. It had a whole host of problems and we've corrected 98% of those. This pump, it's a VE Bosch pump. This is off, it took me a long time to find it. This is off of, I think, a forklift, forklift out of Korea or Japan so these are slightly I don't want to say rare but they're slightly hard to come by <laughs> I'm gonna probably get this wrong and anybody that knows injection pumps is probably gonna call me an idiot most injection pumps are turn to the right Okay, so if you were looking at the front of the engine, which would be the radiator, the, the fan side, they turn this way. So they turn this way. This one turns this way. So it's a left-hand direction. And you can tell <clears throat> on the serial number for this, there's, you know, 10 letters and then there's like an R or an L. Okay, well this is an L. This engine is a Perkins 4.135. Its family of engines is the Perkins 200 series, which consisted of three engines, 4.135, 4.154, and the 4.182. Perkins made them for Mazda, and put them in the Rangers. They also made them for a model of it, for Gale skid steers, Bobcat skid steers, which those two for the Gale and the Bobcat are 4.154s. I don't remember which model of forklift. And Westerbeek marine engines. The, the three of those, the, the 135, 154, and the 182 all were in sailboat engines. Um, parts for those are super expensive. Parts for these are really hard to find. So not sure if anybody's ever gonna watch this. If you have anything for these engines, injectors, injection pump, the block, anything, crankshaft, rods, uh, contact me in the comments we'll get in contact and i will buy stuff from you the parts for these engines are hard to find they're i hate calling these engines bulletproof because i think it's stupid these engines take a lot of abuse i heard i've read that they're they're probably one of the best diesel engines ever made as far as four cylinders go that's arguable and there's a lot of diesel engines out there but anyways this pump is off of a forklift so the pump for the original pump for the truck, I believe is governed different. And like I said, I'm not an expert. I know a lot about diesels. I'm not an expert with it. So anybody that is probably gonna call me an idiot here. <clears throat> I believe they're governed different <clears throat> up in here somewhere. Um, I don't know, I don't remember if it was a spring or what, but something is way different. Um, as soon as we swapped these out, it was night and day. It would bog down before with the old pump. This one doesn't, doesn't at all. Um, super happy with this. Cost me three or $400 for this pump, which is cheap, which is super cheap for an injection pump. Um, and I, it's been on for, I want to say two years now. I think I think it's been on two years. Um, 
without issue. Um, didn't reseal it when I got it. The only thing I did was with the uh, with the rotor and the distributor head here, uh, there's an O-ring in here that leaked on the old one. That's the only thing that I changed out. Um, other than that, uh, got shipped to me and installed in this and it was running within an hour. Um, but like I said, uh, this video's longer than it needed to be now. Um, I'll make another video when I get these pulled apart, um, changing the chains out. Uh, I got bearings though. A couple years ago, I uh, changed bearings in the front axles and on both sides. Uh, the only ones I didn't do was the rear axles. Might do those while I got it apart and changing chains. Um, this side too. Um, might do that, but it's a good engine. It need it leaks a little bit of oil here and there. I at some point need to pull the engine out and uh, put a rear main seal in. Um, it does leak. I won't say a lot, but it leaks enough that it's annoying. Um, then it has leaks here and there, but for a almost 30 year old, no, almost 40 year old engine now, um, it starts, I think two winters ago, it was 27 below and it was plugged in for five or six hours, fired up like it was 80 out. Um, spit and sputtered a little bit, but um, for a diesel engine when it's that cold that's that's pretty i would say pretty good anyways rambled on long enough um bring it back let me get these pans off shrouds off side plates off i'll get it right eventually see ya